Ramon arrived in San Francisco from a small Venezuelan village. Back home, he left behind his wife and three children, the oldest of whom was six years old. Jobs were scarce in the village, and the pay was low, so Ramon, like many others, went to work in the States. The city by the bay did not welcome him with open arms. For a while, he lived with acquaintances in a construction trailer and helped out at a construction site. There was plenty of work, but the pay was meager. Ramon needed to legalize his status in the U.S., or he would be deported and his chances of supporting his family would be slim. It was risky to buy a work permit for a construction job, since it was unreliable and temporary. A new permit was needed for another profession, so Ramon started looking for something he could do for at least a year to work legally. During his search for something better, he came across a job posted for waitstaff. Ramon went to the interview wearing a suit, thinking it was the only suitable clothes to appear professional. The restaurant owner personally spoke with each candidate. Seeing the Latino man in a business suit, he joked, It seems the manager's position is taken. We're hiring waiters, and you're in a suit. Ramon became flustered, thinking they would surely not hire him. He had wanted to make a good impression. Your restaurant is upscale, so I dressed respectfully, he managed to reply. In the end, they hired him. The owner talked with Ramon for a long time and then offered him a salary he was willing to pay. The owner also covered the cost of Ramon's work permit. The pay was slightly more than at the construction site, and the working conditions were better. Ramon thought, maybe I can save money on food, too, and agreed. Later, he realized that it wasn't much easier than work at the construction site. At least there, he could rest during the night. At the restaurant, he often had to stay overnight to get everything done. There was a lot of work during the day and night. The restaurant, located in a nice neighborhood, was popular among guests. There were often weddings and anniversaries. Naturally, such events required extra effort. Ramon's duties as a waiter included not only serving guests and cleaning the hall, but also helping the chefs prepare ingredients for the next day. He also helped decorate the hall for special events. No extra money came from these responsibilities. On the contrary, the owner constantly found reasons to criticize. Ramon struggled to keep his job, let alone get a raise. The owner even demanded accounting for tips, leaving only a small percentage for the wait staff. Ramon was afraid of losing his job, so he complied with all the requirements. He wouldn't get rich from staying under the radar, but his consequence would be clear. The man knew that other waiters were paid more, and they didn't show all their tips to the management so it made no sense to ask for a raise. Whenever he tried to talk about it with the owner, the owner would immediately find a reason to point out some flaws in Ramon's work. In short, he kept his employee on a tight leash, knowing that Ramon was afraid of losing his job. After all, he was only allowed to work as a waiter due to his work permit. It wasn't a sure thing that someone else would hire him, and he needed to send money to his family. His wife didn't work staying at home with their young children. When no one was around, Ramon loved to hum a tune to himself. He would work and sing to make the time pass more quickly. One day, another waiter caught him in the act and began to sing along. At first, Ramon was taken aback, but then they finished the song together. Not bad, his co-worker praised him. You should try out for a singing competition. Have you ever tried your hand at that? What kind of singer would I be? Ramon modestly replied. He had no formal music education. He just sang when no one was watching, and he didn't take his co-worker's words seriously. The co-worker was probably just trying to be supportive. They often talked and supported each other emotionally after a long and tiring shift. Singing is different from carrying glasses, the co-worker said. Just don't tell me you never dreamed of fame. Who doesn't dream of that? Ramon smiled. But someone has to carry the glasses, he said, sadly shrugging his shoulders. Of course, everyone has secret dreams, but that's all they are. They often have nothing to do with reality. Once there was a wedding at the restaurant, there was a lot of work to be done. The guests were sophisticated and capricious. They exhausted the entire staff. They wanted this and that, complained about the heat, asked about air conditioning, and then complained about drafts because the bride's mother had bronchitis. The waiters ran around all day trying to please everyone. 
and the owner was there too, watching every employee. Apparently, the event was important to him, and he didn't want to receive bad reviews. He didn't mingle with the guests, but kept a close eye on the waiters, making sure they were constantly attentive to the guests' needs. In the end, the entire staff was exhausted and barely holding back their frustration. They couldn't wait for it all to end. And then, as if a gift from heaven, the power went out. It turned out there was a problem with the electrical line, and it was unclear when it would be fixed. The neighborhood might be without power until morning. The staff secretly rejoiced. They thought the guests would be bored sitting in the dark and leave earlier than expected. But the owner, of course, couldn't allow the wedding to be ruined by such an inconvenience. They started placing candles throughout the room. It was romantic, to say the least. The master of ceremonies encouraged everyone. Luckily, his microphone worked with batteries. His voice could be heard throughout the room. At first, the guests seemed to enjoy the unusual atmosphere, but soon they began to miss the music. They wanted to dance, but all they could do was listen to the master of ceremonies and eat. The guests were getting bored. Even the DJ seemed somewhat dispirited, and laughter was barely audible. The restaurant owner was scolding his employees. Do the impossible. I don't know what, but make this wedding a success. He left the staff with the task and hurried away. That's when Ramon's co-worker nudged him. Come on, this is your chance. You've been dreaming about this, he whispered. The man hesitated, looking around for the owner's approval. It was unlikely he'd approve of such an initiative. The boss went to get more candles, his friend informed him. Don't worry, he won't notice. Just go for it, he continued to push Ramon into the hall. What should I sing? The young Venezuelan asked, bewildered. Anything, just make sure it's in English, his partner snickered. And so Ramon hesitantly approached the MC, who happened to be taking a break. Exhausted from entertaining the guest, the power outage had given him as much extra work as the rest of the restaurant staff. He had been dancing between tables, running from one guest to another. So when the waiter approached and offered to sing, he was delighted. He immediately announced a folk singing contest and invited anyone interested to support the initiative. Ramon took the microphone amidst lukewarm applause. People evidently didn't expect much from him, but when the waiter began singing Journeys Don't Stop Believin', the audience fell silent. The man's velvety voice sounded incredible, even without musical accompaniment. One song definitely wouldn't be enough. The guest enjoyed the new form of entertainment. Life returned to the hall. Ramon's partner looked around the room, somewhat proud of himself for convincing his friend to take the stage. It might not be a million-person audience or even a thousand, but it was a good start for a newcomer. After all, Ramon had never dared to sing in front of his own family. In the end, the man sang several songs. After each, the guests applauded, standing up. They didn't even notice when the lights came back on at some point. By that time, the owner had returned. He watched in surprise as the guests continued to sit by candlelight, even though the lights were on. The staff seemed to have completely abandoned their duties, especially the Venezuelan man with the microphone. The owner stood there, holding a box of candles, glaring at his employees, entertaining the crowd. When Ramon finished singing the next song, the owner approached the DJ, smiling and pointing at the burning light bulbs, as if to say, the power is back on, play some music. As soon as the waiter went to the kitchen, the owner began scolding him like a schoolboy for neglecting his work. Ramon began to make excuses, but the owner, not listening, hurried him along. Come on, take the tray and head to the hall. The man continued with his duties, and a woman at one of the tables called him over. She started praising him for the beautifully performed songs. In her opinion, he had made the wedding unforgettable. My daughter's wedding is coming up, she said. Could you sing for us, too? We're actually looking for a performer. Ramon was at a loss. It was one thing to sing impromptu, unprepared. There wasn't much responsibility involved. But this was for money. And it was a considerable sum the woman mentioned when she saw that he was hesitating. The waiter nervously looked around, afraid that his boss would notice. He asked for some time to think it over and rushed to the kitchen. On his way, another guest stopped him asking for his contact information, explaining that he often organizes various events and would like to have the option to invite a talented performer. To quickly get rid of the stranger, Ramon gave him his number. 
He entered the kitchen completely bewildered. His co-worker asked what was going on, and Ramon began to tell him about the guest's interest in him and the woman's offer. What are you waiting for? His friend interrupted. Agree to it without thinking. But what about work? The boss won't let me off for three days, Ramon worried. The boss, huh? His co-worker scoffed. You're not his property. You work without days off and get paid peanuts. Nothing will happen to him if you sing at one wedding. But this is a steady job. Nothing in this world is permanent, his co-worker noted. Ramon calmed down and went back to the woman. He said he would agree to her offer and check the dates. He decided he would try to negotiate with his boss. Indeed, he hadn't taken a single vacation, and he particularly spent all weekends at work. Later, another guest approached him, thanked and praised him, and asked for his contact information. Ramon spent the whole evening in a daze, as if he had entered another reality. When the guests were leaving, the man who had first asked for his phone number offered him a gig at a corporate event. When Ramon later approached his boss to request a few days off, the boss refused. Once again threatened that Ramon could lose his job altogether. It was wedding season, so why would he let a waiter take time off? Where would he find a temporary replacement? Of course, a replacement could be found. Even Ramon knew that. But with the salary he was being paid, it was unlikely anyone would agree to work for that amount. So the boss did everything he could to keep the inexpensive labor. Ramon had to quit the restaurant with a scandal. Only his co-workers supported him in this decision. The man was hesitant to leave, but he had already made arrangements with others and didn't want to let them down. He hoped that things would work out later. Work at the restaurant continued as usual. The owner quickly forgot about the hired worker, but after some time he received an invitation to a performance by an artist who had been gaining popularity lately. To the restaurant owner's surprise, the performer turned out to be the very same Venezuelan waiter. Since leaving the restaurant, the owner thought, into the unknown, he had achieved a lot in his life and became a well-known performer, released a solo album, and now had organized a tour in honor of it. For the frugal restaurant owner, the invitation was unexpected. He didn't think the former employee, whom he had not treated very well, would remember him. But Ramon wasn't offended by his employer. On the contrary, upon seeing the restaurant owner in attendance, he made a speech after the performance in which he mentioned him. He wholeheartedly thanked his former boss. Ramon considered him a good person who cared about his business. If it weren't for this man, the incredible experience I gained at the restaurant, I would never have become who I am today. It is thanks to this person that I stand here now on this stage. My life changed the moment I started working at that restaurant. I was given a chance and I took it. The restaurant owner, listening to Ramon, shed a tear. Not only did Ramon hold no grudge against him, but he also sincerely thanked him. Only one person with a huge heart could do that. Ramon continued his speech, now thanking his family for their support. No less touching words were addressed to his wife. Family is the only thing worth living for, Ramon said. Love your loved ones while they're close, even if miles separate you. My wife taught me to love, and this love extends to everyone. When you see the good in every person, you understand that life is beautiful. My wife supported me in everything, sacrificed herself so I could get back on my feet, and loved me when I wasn't attractive to most. Now I can lend her my shoulder. Thank you, my dear.